Moments. Moments have defined players' legacies for as long as the NBA has existed, and no moments are more significant than the ones that take place in the NBA Finals. Whether for the better or for the worse, the way these legendary players performed on the game's biggest stage ultimately defined how they were remembered for decades to come. With this in mind, there have been many NBA Finals performances that have been crucial to that specific player's legacy. For example, Allen Iverson's iconic Game 1 performance in the NBA Finals where he beat the previously undefeated Los Angeles Lakers, sealing the deal with his pull-up jumper and with his famous step-over of Tyron Lu. Without this game and without this moment, the way we view the legacy of Allen Iverson changes quite dramatically. Other examples would be Kobe Bryant's fifth ring, LeBron James's third ring, and Jerry West's first. Let me first elaborate on Kobe Bryant's fifth. Sure, the Mamba had already won four championship rings heading into the 2010 season, but three of those were with Shaq as the lead star, and the fourth was an easier ring due to Kevin Garnett's season-ending knee injury, which otherwise would have likely resulted in an NBA Finals rematch between the Lakers and the Celtics in 2009. If Kobe lost to the Celtics when he played them again in 2010, then it would have been an 0-2 Finals record against their historic rivals, and the Mamba wouldn't have a championship ring where he was clearly the team's best player and where the Lakers didn't have an easier road to the championship. Not to mention how Kobe's four rings would have left him just short of Magic Johnson's total of five, which would almost certainly eliminate Kobe from consideration of the greatest Laker of all time. Then there's LeBron's ring in 2016. Without this championship over the 73-9 Warriors, look at what he accomplished. He won two championships in four years on a stacked Miami Heat super team, where even LeBron himself had previously predicted at least eight championships. Then there's the ring in 2020, which was accomplished in the Florida bubble after a huge delay due to the pandemic. And to this day, many people refer to this ring as the Mickey Mouse Championship trying to invalidate its legitimacy. Without the championship over the highly favored Warriors, LeBron's accomplishments are all basically seen as easy road achievements, and he's almost certainly not in the greatest of all time conversation without this legacy defining moment. Then there's Jerry West's first and only championship ring in 1972. The logo is also remembered by another nickname, Mr. Clutch. But if he finished with a tragically winless 8-0 finals record, it's honestly debatable whether or not anyone would still use that nickname today. Although he was never able to lead his Lakers past the superior Boston Celtics, he did end up finally redeeming his legacy a bit when his all-time great 1972 Lakers defeated the New York Knicks in the finals. Obviously, without this lone championship ring, West would inevitably have more damning narratives about his career as a player. But even with all of these crucial rings considered, I still believe that there's one that stands above them as the most important ring to a player's legacy of all time. And that is Dirk Nowitzki's lone championship ring in 2011. With this ring on his resume, Dirk is viewed today as a Dallas legend and as one of the greatest power forwards of all time, and as the man who conquered a super team when no one expected him to. But what if I told you that without this ring, he would be viewed as a failure, as a choker, and as one of the most underwhelming talents of basketball history? Sounds a bit drastic? Well, I have the memory and the context to explain to you why it's not. Heading into the 2010-2011 season, the perception of Dirk Nowitzki and his legacy was in a much different place. Although younger basketball fans may not know this, the vast majority of Dirk's career was riddled with high expectations followed by disappointment. One of the biggest examples was when Nowitzki and the Mavericks blew a 2-0 series lead to the Miami Heat in the 2006 NBA Finals. Dirk's underwhelming performance was a big reason why they lost the next four games straight, as he shot 38.7% from the field during that stretch and an ugly 22.2% from three-point range. Another massive example was when Dirk Nowitzki's Mavericks finished with a franchise record 67 wins at the end of the 2007 regular season. 
Heading into the playoffs, they seemed poised for revenge, and as if they were ready to win the championship that they thought they should have won the previous season. But then, they were stunningly upset in the first round of the playoffs by the 8th seeded Golden State Warriors, a Warriors team that finished with 25 less wins throughout the regular season, making it one of the biggest upsets of NBA history. Once again, Nowitzki's terrible inefficiency certainly didn't help, as he shot only 38.3% over the course of the series and a terrible 21.1% from three-point range. This came after he wrapped up his MVP campaign for the regular season, which made his drop-off even more painful. These two are obviously the biggest and most memorable examples of Nowitzki's team's disappointing, but it's also far from the only times it happened. Heading into the 2011 playoffs, the Mavericks had won at least 50 games for the past 11 seasons straight, and three of those were 60-win seasons. Yet despite all of that regular season success, they had never won the NBA championship. That is a long trend of giving your fan base high expectations just to end up disappointing them. Most of those disappointments were tied to their often subpar defense in the postseason, which even earned them the nickname the Alice Mavericks due to the fact that they had no D. And defensive prowess certainly wasn't something that Nowitzki was known for either. It got to a point that no matter how well Dirk and the Mavericks did in the regular season, we all expected them to disappoint in the postseason. Why? because that's what they always did. That was their track record, and that was their reputation. There was absolutely no reason to expect otherwise, because when we had in the past, they just made a fool out of us over and over again. Heading into the 2011 playoffs, Dirk was a 32-year-old seven-footer, who was clearly beginning to slow down athletically. So honestly, this was one of the times that we least expected him to deliver. But we all remember what actually happened. They began by eliminating a solid Trailblazers team in six games. Then they swept the defending champion Los Angeles Lakers in the second round. Then they defeated a much younger Oklahoma City Thunder team in the conference finals. And then, as the biggest stunner of them all, Dirk and the Mavericks defeated the Big Three's Miami Heat in six games. If it wasn't for this incredible run, Dirk's playoff resume essentially has nothing worth bragging about. He would have been sitting around the top of the list of the greatest talents to never win a championship, and he would be seen as one of the biggest chokers of playoff history. This championship ring literally changed everything for Nowitzki, even to the point that many young fans today don't even realize that this terrible legacy was a very realistic possibility that was just narrowly avoided. I'm not even suggesting that this was a fair and accurate way to view Dirk Nowitzki at this point in his career, because when all things are considered, you realize that he didn't have a tremendous amount of superstar support throughout the vast majority of his prime years. But, regardless of whether or not it was fair for him to be viewed as a choker, by and large, that was the reality of how he was viewed pre-2011 finals. So what do you guys think? Is Dirk Nowitzki's ring the most important in NBA history? Or is there another player whose ring meant more to his legacy? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Thanks for watching as always. Make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.